Have you ever noticed that some websites have this tiny horizontal scrolling that allows you to scroll the page left and right for no particular reason. That is actually a very easy mistake to make. So in today's video, we'll look into how it typically happens and what you can do to avoid that issue. Let's take a look at this website, for example. Here's Coindesk website. And if you notice, there is a scroll bar at the bottom of the screen here, which allows you to scroll the page left and right which has no purpose, it's basically a bug. And the amount of sites I see it on is astonishing. Let me show you how it typically happens. I have this demo website that I've created for this video. It has a header, a footer, title, some dummy headings and paragraphs, and a figure in the middle of the page. The content area for this website has a max width and margin auto on the left and right. So if we look at the inspector, we'll see exactly that. Let's check entry content. We have margin auto and a max width set for the container. So it all works fine until one day you decide or your client asks you to make the image full width. And you're thinking, I can just uh, go to the HTML here. I can add a class that says something like width, I can save it. And then in CSS, I'm like, okay, we want the image to be as wide as the screen, or as wide as the viewport, right? There are viewport units, I can use those. So I'm like, okay, let me set the width to 100 viewport units, and see what happens. I'll reload the page. Okay, it's 100 viewport units, but obviously it's not centered. So I just need to center it. So I'll go back and add negative margins. And I can do that by doing very similar thing. I set margin in line and I'll just calculate it. So what do we need? We'll need 50% of the viewport and then subtract the half of the content area. So we'll do just that and we need a negative value, right? So we'll just do minus one multiplied by this value. Or if you want to be very concise and smart, we can actually reverse the values here and it would do the same thing. So we can avoid the multiplication on minus one and it's all very concise. So that should do it. Let's see what happens. We refresh the page et voila. Well, that was easy enough, right? Well, not exactly. The problem here is that even though it works most of the time, different browsers treat the scroll bars differently. By default, the scroll bar may look very minimal, um, semi-transparent and slick. As you can see, as I scroll the page, it's on the right and it doesn't take any space on the screen. But in other systems, it may look less cool and actually take space on the screen. And that space is taken into account when we use viewport units. So essentially what happens when you set the width of the element to 100 viewport units, you're saying make it as wide as the screen, including the scroll bar. But when the scroll bar is present, there is less real estate on the page because that space is taken by the width of the scroll bar itself. So there's so there's not enough space for the element to fit on the screen and that is causing the horizontal scrolling. Now, if you're on a Mac, what I want you to do is open system settings and go to appearance and change this setting that says show scroll bars to always. Now let's go back to our website and see that that approach that we just took to make this full width creates the horizontal scrolling. And that's something we want to avoid. Anyways, now let's talk about solutions. Now solution number one is CSS only, but it doesn't work all the time. It is my favorite though, because not only it's very compact, it also shows your fundamental knowledge of CSS. So let's return to our demo. Oh, and by the way, I would probably style it like this to only target the immediate child of entry content. But anyways, uh, back to the solution. As you may know, in horizontal writing mode, basically languages like English, all block elements take all available space in the inline direction, basically left to right. So let me disable this for now and also disable the max width 
and margin inline auto on entry content and show you what I mean. I'll go back here, refresh the page. And as you can see, all elements on the page are now full width, including the image. And there is no horizontal scrolling. So we sort of fixed the image and achieved our goal, but broke everything else. So let's fix it. Let's go back to VS Code. And the way we can fix it is instead of targeting entry content element, we can target every immediate child of entry content. So let me uncomment this and see what happens now. So basically we're back to square one, but with the different implementation. Now to the fun part, we can uncomment this now and set max width of this element to none. See, we're not setting it to 100%. We're not setting it to 100 view per unit. We're just setting it to its default value, basically resetting it to a default behavior so it can span from one edge of the screen to another, taking all available space. And let's see what happens. I refresh the page and everything looks as it should. Headings, paragraphs are centered, but our image is full width and there is no horizontal scrolling. So that is solution number one. Okay, this is all great. I love this solution a lot, but what do you do if you cannot change the styles of entry content? Sometimes this happens when those styles come from third party plugins or third party tools, or you simply don't want to change them because there is a lot of content. For example, there could be 15,000 pages that use that element and another 157 components that sit inside. That requires a lot of tests and a lot of QA and you just don't have time for all that. In those cases, in a nutshell, we need to figure out a way to calculate the width of the viewport without the scroll bar. Unfortunately, there are no CSS only solutions that I'm aware of. Even recently added dynamic viewport units don't account for scroll bars. Uh, and solutions like calculating 100 viewport units minus 100% doesn't work for elements that are nested inside other elements that are narrower than the width of the screen, the width of the viewport. That means that we need to use JavaScript to calculate that. So how do we do that? Let me show you. So let me comment out our approach number one. I'll just do, I'll add another style for entry content. So it's back to the initial state. And then, and then we'll go to script.js. I already included the script on the page. It's just an empty file for now. Okay, so how do we calculate the width of the scroll bar? So we can use two things, inner width property of the window and client width property of the body. The first one includes the scroll bar width while the second one doesn't. So we can do something like this. And we can wrap it into a function. So it always returns the width of the scroll bar. something like that. Now that we have this function, we can use it to set a CSS property on the body that will hold the value of the width of the scroll bar. Here's how we can do it. We do document body, body style set property, and the, we can call it scroll bar width. And the value would be something like this. So we are using this function here. And the important thing is to use pixels here like this, because if it's zero, we won't be able to use this value in the calculation later in CSS. I'll show you what I mean. Now, I would also wrap it in a function and call it something like this and probably wrap it for readability maybe this one too for consistency. Okay, now that we have this function, we can attach it to DOM content loaded event. So it fires when the content is rendered. That's pretty much it. There are a few edge cases that I want to mention, but we'll get to those in a second. Now, let's see if this actually works. Notice how the body doesn't have anything right now. And if I refresh the page, it has scroll bar width undefined in the <laughs> undefined BX. Okay, I made some sort of mistake, I think. 
right i need to return the value okay let's try it again cool now it says 15 pixels perfect um i would clean this up and wrap the whole thing in an iffy to not pollute the the global scope so let's do that so this event runs when the content on the page is loaded but not when the entire page with images videos and any other assets is, is is loaded and this can cause the page to change dimensions it may be that when it's initially loaded we don't need the scroll bar but when all the images are, lo are loaded we do need it so i would also add the load event here so we can copy this line and do it like this and another edge case that we should think about is the resize event. Imagine that you're holding an iPad and in port rate and in port rate orientation, you don't need the scroll bar, but then you change it to the horizontal orientation and we do need the scroll bar. So we need to keep looking for a resize event and keep updating the scroll bar with. So let's copy this one, resize here. And this is almost done. Another thing I would consider here is adding a debounce to the resize event. This function will be called a lot of times and we don't need to call it more than, I don't know, like once every 100 milliseconds. But for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to leave it like this because the logic here is very simple. Just leave a note that uh, send debounce to do. And that is pretty much it for the JavaScript part. So let's make sure that we have the scroll bar CSS property set here. And then later in CSS, what I will usually do is I would set a fallback for the scroll bar width. So if JavaScript fails, we still have that CSS property available. And now that we have this fallback, we can go ahead and style the image element. So let's do that right here. First, we're going to set the width and the margins. Now let's check if it works. So we have our page here, scrolling to the image. Now let's refresh and it's done. If we inspect it, we'll see that we have our styles here. And if we click on the scroll bar, it is actually set to 15 pixels. And the value comes from, comes from the scroll bar width set on the body. And this is it for our JavaScript solution. So basically anytime, anytime I want to use the full width of the viewport, I use this simple calculation and it doesn't cause horizontal scrolling. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new today. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.